What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit the little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on chapter four in our series of the SSI Enriched Air Nitrox course. And we've learned a ton of stuff throughout the program. Today we're going to kind of look at the planning stage and how we actually go out and dive nitrox. But before we get started, just remember, please do not use this video as a way for you to go out and dive nitrox. Use it simply as a study guide to help you pass your final exam for the SSI Enriched Air Nitrox program. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into chapter four of your nitrox program. Now the first part of chapter four that we're going to talk about is planning the dives using the tables. The cool thing about the SSI dive tables are it's actually three tables in one. We've got 21% standard breathing gas, we got 32% or NOAA 1, and we have 36% NOAA 2, and they're all interchangeable. So if you're changing between dives, say from 32 to 36, or 36 to 21, or 21 to 36, or vice versa, you can use the same table to plan your dives. Now you're going to plan it out just like you would with standard 21%. You're just making sure that you're using the right column, whether it's 21, 32, or 36 percent. Now the next part of chapter four, we're going to look at planning with a dive computer. Most dive computers today have plan functions where you can go in and you can set the mode to nitrox. You can actually plan any blend up to say 40 percent, or if you have a technical computer, you can go even higher than that. So you simply put your computer into nitrox mode, set it to the exact blend that you want, the exact partial pressure of O2 you do not want to exceed, then it can actually go in and plan your dives out for you. Your local SSI enriched air nitrox instructor will sit down with you and work with you and your computer to show you exactly how to plan a dive using your specific computer. Now let's talk about managing your exposure to oxygen. In an earlier chapter, we did talk about oxygen toxicity and how that we do want to prevent that when diving. Now there's several ways that we can do this. Obviously the most simplest way is just to monitor your computer. It's going to walk you through your oxygen clock. We also have a table that can walk you through it as well. And this table will actually build up oxygen and take oxygen away. It's very similar how the dive tables do with nitrogen in itself. However, now we're going to be focusing on oxygen. Just remember, we never want to exceed more than 1.4 partial pressure of O2 on any given dive or even a series of dives throughout a 24-hour period. Now, a cool little fun fact about using your nitrox tables from SSI is, of course, it's got that 21%, the 32 and 36% built in. However, let's say you're using the tables and you don't actually have a dive computer. Did you know that you could still use your SSI dive tables in standard 21% mode for any nitrox blend out there? We have what's called the equivalent air depth formula. And what this does is this converts any blend to 21%. So you can use the 21% column with any blend out there simply by using this formula. And the cool thing is it will give you an exact time if you're doing, say, a square profile dive. Now, of course, dive computers are much safer and are encouraged throughout your dives. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where your computer's not working and you do have nitrox, you can use the equivalent air depth formula and still make a dive simply by using the 21% column on your SSI enriched air nitrox tables. Now to finish up chapter four, we need to talk about decision-making processes while diving nitrox. Is nitrox really gonna be crucial to this given dive? Is it gonna be beneficial or practical to spend the extra money on this specific dive? These are questions you need to ask yourself before you go and pick up a nitrox cylinder or even get a nitrox fill. A lot of people will do it simply for the safety factor of it, and some people do it just to shorten up their surface intervals in between dives. Whatever your reason for diving nitrox, you, need, you and your buddy need to come to an agreement before that dive to see if it's going to be beneficial. If it is, make sure your gear is properly equipped for it, make sure your tanks are O2 clean, and make sure you have that certification before you go and try to get a nitrox field. But guys, that's going to finish it up for chapter four, and we were actually going to finish the series out with this video. However, we are going to put a specialized video out for what we were going to call the appendix section, because we're going to be going over all the calculations you need to know for nitrox, and hopefully this will help you pass your final exam. 
That's what this whole entire series is about, is to help you guys pass your final exam. It's not to teach you how to go out and dive nitrox. That's what your local SSI Enriched Air Nitrox instructor is going to do for you. We would just like you to use this video series to help you pass your final exam. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed Chapter 4. Stay tuned. Our very next video is going to be the appendix section of this program where we're going to look at all the formulas you need to know, and we're going to be showing you examples of each and every one as well. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.